Welcome everybody back. I'd like to say welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We're really excited today because we have Beth Larson on, Vice President of Client Experience with JMT Consulting. And Beth's going to drill down with us strategic leadership for nonprofits. Wow. Beth, I, I, I know we're only a 30-minute show. This could be like a 30-day show, right? It it's could. A it could. Yes. It's a topic. It but is. It is. Do you think that it's a it's a topic that we don't talk enough about or we're always talking about it? You know, I think that it's a it's a topic that um we should be talking more about, but that or we think we're doing and what we'll talk about today, what I'll touch upon is what are some of those characteristics of, of what strategic leadership is and what it is not? Because I think it's easy to assume we're being strategic, but when you really drill down into, into what that looks like in practice, um, you may discover otherwise. Wow. Okay. Well, now you have piqued my interest. Because, <laughs> you know, I think we all genuinely try our hardest and work with our best intent. But sometimes, 100%. Yeah. Sometimes that's not good enough. And if we're not educated and we don't know, then we're just, you know, repeating problems and, and yeah, making it worse for ourselves and everyone. Hey, everybody, I want to make sure that you know about our new co-host panel. We are so excited. After more than a thousand shows and five years of episodes and broadcasting, we have assembled a national co-host panel. They come from all over the country. They're incredibly diverse in thought, action, and deed, and location. And uh, we've been rolling them out, and hopefully... Um, you've been enjoying meeting them uh, because they're just a marvel. Another thing that's a marvel are our sponsors. We have amazing support, and that includes our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Speaking of JMT Consulting, okay, Beth Larson, tell us what you do within that family of wonderful JMT uh, folks. Well, I have the privilege of being able to work with all of JMT's clients who are um, all nonprofit organizations across North America. And they range in size from a small local nonprofit to a international uh, scope. And so our team collectively works together um, on the on supporting our clients throughout their their journey with JMT. So we we lead um, in providing technology and consulting services to. Um, our nonprofit clients. We assist them in implementing um, software and technology solutions. And we um, ensure that they they have the support that they need to carry out their mission. Amazing. I was really privileged to be in Boston with your folks um, and so many nonprofit leaders from the fintech area and, and sector um, just a few weeks. And it was riveting to spend nearly a week with folks that are such an integral part of the, their nonprofit, but coming to it from the lens of finance and operations. And I learned so much. It was really, really interesting to see how dedicated these folks were. Um, and I left that conference thinking that I bet a lot of their own team members within their organizations don't really understand what they do and the pressures that they have in modern society with the digital world. And we spent a lot of time on cyber, um, you know, security and, and different things. I mean, when it wasn't just one speaker, I mean, it was a theme that, that it seemed to keep coming back, right? Exactly. Uh, it was fascinating fascinating uh opportunity for for me and for the um nonprofit show to be there so um it was a lot of fun well i think what's going to be a lot of fun is our conversation today and i want to start off with what is strategic leadership 
and what it is not. <laughs> How do we look at this? Yes. So I'd like to just start by acknowledging how many different directions nonprofit leaders are pulled in each and every day, um, regardless of, of what their specific mission is. There are just, there is almost exclusively more demand than there is resource and capacity to, to meet that demand. Um, so what what I like to you know describe strategic leadership is is having a clear common purpose and clear priorities um, that assist you in carrying out that purpose. So it isn't just simply having a clear mission or vision statement. It's articulating for your team what looks different if you're successful in achieving the strategic priorities. So help them to envision how they play a role in carrying that out. Okay. Also, oh, go ahead. That's, that's like a mind blowing thing. <laughs> because when I hear you say this, I mean, first of all, that you set the stage about being pulled in a million different directions. Yeah. Mm -hmm preaching to the choir on that. Absolutely. But what you're saying is going to really require almost for us to step back and think. It does. Think, wow. How, how yeah. often do we get that? Or do we exactly make that a priority? I should say. Yeah. It, the amount of discipline and intentionality that it requires to, um, to slow down and especially for those that are, I mean, we're, we're post pandemic, right? And, and for several years, we were operating in a hamster wheel. And now what we're seeing is the re receding funding from that era that is causing organizations to have to recast and reevaluate where they're headed and in, in, in what they're, what, how they're going to navigate the future. Wow. You know, I love that you framed that up for us because it kind of makes me rethink about this concept in that it's not a failure or um, a strength necessarily. It is, it's an environment. Is that fair to say? But it's how we choose to deal with that environment. Absolutely. And it becomes your culture, right? It becomes a, a part of, of who your organization is. And um, the other thing I, I want to, to kind of highlight is, um, you know, ensuring that the culture, it, when it becomes strategic, it becomes consumer focused, and you can ensure that what you're doing day in and day out is centering the voices of those that you exist to serve, that you are you are in operation for a reason. And um, when you are centering those voices in both planning in the evaluation of what you're doing, then you can um, ensure that that you're meeting their needs and uh, the needs of those constituents. You know, the the thought leadership, attached to this, I find absolutely riveting. And I've got to believe it's frustrating for some people to even think, like literally stop and think and not just react. Um, because that is what in so many ways we've been trained up to do. And we just go from crisis to crisis. To yes. Crisis. Why do you think strategic leadership is critical to nonprofits? Um, because I think there's some good to, to being an organization or as having a mindset that you can respond to problems, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of nonprofit leaders can deal with a, a, a crisis a hell of a lot easier, faster, and more efficiently than for-profit, but that's not where we want to live, right? So how and why is this critical right now? Well, I think first and foremost, the work that our nonprofit organizations are doing in our local communities and our society at large is just essential. It is essential to the safety and the well being of our families, of our children, of our law enforcement, of our systems and, and community at large. Um, but even more so, speaking again to the scarcity of the resources that are there to meet the, the needs that our nonprofits are our position to face is you have to be 
so thoughtful and intentional about how you're utilizing the resources that you have at your disposal, because um, that demand will almost always outpace um, the the resources that you have available to deliver. Right, right. Well, and I think too, to your point, it's a strategic aspect of, you know, we, we will hear a lot of fundraisers specifically say, you know, they want to follow a mindset of abundance and not play with scared money, as my mother would say. Yeah. So, I mean, really look at what we can be doing and, and have a more open mind and everything. But listening to you, that almost seems more like a strategy and not just a, a wish, right? It is. It is. And I'm I'm glad you said that, Julia, because I think that there's a a definite intersection there in opportunity that when you are strategic, then when you are raising dollars and communicating about your mission, when you envision where you're headed and what your destination looks like, if you have a major donor that comes to you with a proposal and says, hey, I've got this, you know, pivotal gift I could I could present to you, what would you do with it? You're going to be prepared to say, we've we've got a, a roadmap, a compass, and this is how you can help us get there. And it's a it's a great what your strategy has to involve all players in your organization, most importantly, your development staff. Right, right. Yeah. It's such an interesting thing. And again, it goes back to what you first said, and that is, you know, um, making the investment, stepping back and taking mm -hmm. this time. I've got to throw a curveball at you. Um, is this like a one and done go away for a long weekend and do this? Or is this, you know, every month, every minute? Like, how do you help us to frame frame this I'm going to use the word mindset, but maybe mm -hmm. you used a better word, discipline. Mm -hmm. How do we look at this so that we're not just waiting until we do our plans in the fall, right? Right, right. And then you put it, you know, up, you make it pretty <laughs> and put it up. And But I think you have to put a structure in place. I think you, it, you know, the structure has to align with what makes sense for your, your business, your organization. Um, but you have to, you know, it's getting the plan in, in developing the plan is an entire process in and of itself, because you have so many different stakeholders you need to engage along the way to arrive at the finalized plan. But then once you have your plan and your priorities, it's having meetings in a structure in place to ensure that you're um, that it's front and center. I will never forget. I had an incredible board president who taught me some very invaluable um, lessons in one of which was every agenda that we had, whether it was a board meeting or it was even internal staff meetings, it became we had our strategic, our agency strategic priorities on yeah. top of that agenda. And yeah. so we would ask ourselves, are we meeting in, you know, to advance these priorities, or are we just having yet another meeting to have a meeting? And so keep, you know, you have to build that structure and be intentional about um, how you tie your resources and the allocation of those resources into advancing those priorities. And I love that. I would say all, you know, three decades of board service and community leadership. I've only seen that done once with one mm -hmm. organization that I served. And I'll tell you, that organization was a joy to serve for because mm -hmm. they cranked it. And I believe it's so funny you would say you would bring up that example. You know, I believe that that's why they were so successful, um, because it was present in mind. Right. And you would come to work, you know, for your board meeting or your committee meeting or executive committee meeting. And it was right there. Mm -hmm. It was right there. Mm -hmm. And um, it it became something, too, that I witnessed over the years, um, other board members and staff members, but mostly board members who would repeat that phraseology when they were out and about in the community. It became part of their elevator speech. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what, what we were working towards. And so I love that you brought that up because, yeah, yeah that's a powerful thing. Well, let's spend the rest of our time together and talking about common challenges and overcoming 
obstacles when we're thinking about strategic leadership. And you already talked about not looking at this as a task, but more of a cultural thing. How do we know when we're getting it right? Well, I think that you know you're getting it right when you are having the conversations and you're able to step back and reflect and you you see progress. You you understand as part of your plan where you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, it isn't to suggest that. I mean, it's one of the most common challenges that um, every nonprofit will face is a disruption by staff turnover, mm-hmm. an unplanned event such as a pandemic or some other natural disaster that many of our communities are faced with right now. And, you know, it's taking the time to to pause and reflect and recast and determine what what do we need to do? I mean, how do we do we reprioritize, recalibrate? How do we determine the best path forward for us, given these unplanned events? Um, I think that also when there are new financial opportunities that present themselves to organizations, those are terrific. Oper- oh, it's always great to be faced with a financial opportunity. However, with every opportunity usually comes some strings attached and you really have to understand what will those strings look like? And do you have the capacity, particularly administratively, if you're going to step into that space and accept those dollars to deliver on on those um, expectations and what burden it may put on your organization to carry that out, what technology you might need to track data, those kinds of things. So those are very, very common challenges. You know, Beth, um, this is kind of like a chicken or egg question. And I kind of, I love asking this because throughout my life, I've, I've tried to answer this question myself and, and I'll be very candid. I've changed what I thought was the right answer, but I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to throw it to you. Where does this strategy come from? Should it come from the board or should it come from management and how do we navigate this And then here's the kicker. How do we um, do this with our budgets as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, JMT Consulting, you know, the wizards of all things financial and technology. Um, It seems to me like we have these conversations and then we're like, oh, no, we don't have the money to do it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And it's always like, well, hello, let's start at that. You know, let's work these together. But I'm kind of wondering in your mind and and seeing successful organizations, where is the origin of this leadership? Uh, My answer to you is both that it needs to be a collaborative effort. You, you know, the chief executive has must see themselves as a co-pilot with the board chair Mm -hmm. to establish those strategic priorities with their C-suite and executive leadership team and the board. And I think that those priorities need to be driven by who your consumers are. What is the purpose of your organization? What is your, what's your benchmark? What are you faced with right now at this moment in time? And then how are you strategically positioned as an organization to address that issue? Mm -hmm. And what then, what money do we have? I mean, we may want to see in 10 years an end to food insecurity, but if we're an organization with a $200,000 annual budget, we aren't going to be able to do this alone. So let's be realistic and challenge ourselves. And I think also, you know, it is incredibly valuable when an organization can invest in having an outside facilitator come in and help facilitate these conversations so that your C team, your executive leadership can actively participate with the board and come together. And I also think the full staff bench and volunteer base has a voice in it as well. And so I'll I'll never forget before, you know, the pandemic hit and I when I was in a, a position as a chief executive, um, one of the first steps we took before we went to the board with strategic planning was a focused listening session with staff. 
It was a staff of about 45 to 50 people. And we started there because we needed to understand what they were seeing day in and day out first to inform and take to the board. And I, I, you know, could say with confidence, I think the board appreciated that perspective and they each brought a unique perspective because we strategically filled board seats based on where we had gaps on our team. Right. Right. You know, and it, it kind of goes back to the start of our conversation is that that's an investment in itself of slowing down. Yes turning off the phones, closing the door and just saying, okay, we're going to, you know, do something that maybe we don't always make the time to do. Yes. Um, And I, I'm thrilled you brought up the facilitation aspect. Um, Talk to me about what you've seen that works, because I think sometimes we look around the boardroom and we're like, oh, well, Joe can do that or Sally can do that. And we don't need to spend that money. And what is what are your thoughts? I mean, what have you seen and what are you seeing ab- about this? Well, I, I would say that um, having a facilitator and bringing in a facilitator that is going to understand any any unique dynamics that the organization itself has and, and needs to understand. Um, you know, I think that generally speaking, you want to get references, you want to get, you know, opinions of other people who have used facilitators um, and ended up, you know, with with a, a useful product at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, I think that what works is, again, someone who approaches it, understanding what it is the client is looking for to get out of the process and can realistically deliver on that. Um, so, you know, it's it's right sizing those expectations from the very beginning and ensuring that every step of the way that uh, you're delivering on those expectations. Yeah, I, I like that approach. And, and I think it's, it seems to me for an organization, like if you've never done this, if you've never invested in a facilitator, It might seem a little risky, if not frightening. And then once you do, once you have a successful uh, encounter and you see that magic, then you're like, okay, we get, this has got to be the way we, we move forward. We don't have a lot of time left, but one of the obstacles that I seem to think is, is prevalent and it's a frustration. And that is getting everybody to row in the right direction. And so I was meeting with a very large nonprofit yesterday in my community, and it came out that the development team felt like they were going in one direction. The marketing team was kind of going in a different direction and programming was doing something else. The work of the angels, as they said, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and they had three really important groups, really important teams doing heavy lifting, and yet they weren't on the same page. Mm -hmm. How do we think strategically and get people to row in the same direction when maybe they're not, or they can't understand what the other team members are even Mm -hmm. doing? I think you have to, you know, go back. It's a great example of that organization obviously has a mission statement as a nonprofit. It has a vision statement, but internally it has silos in terms of who is focused on what activities and everybody's kind of rowing in a different direction. And eventually you just start kind of spinning in circles. And, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's, it's on the, the board and the leadership team to, to pause and take a moment and have, you know, look in the mirror and say, is this the best use of our time, our energy and our resources? Because to be completely frank, they're going to exhaust themselves by just running and running and running. And it, it, it proverbially, they'll be running in, in, in the same space and not, not moving forward. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, um, 
it it requires that discipline to to step back and and get in the proverbial arena and say this is not working we have to 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 come together and determine how we're going to move forward as a united front right well i i what i witnessed with this group and they are amazing human beings they're very talented there's there's not a weak link amongst them i think the links are not formally uh they're not, they're not properly formed, mm -hmm. but you know, what I witnessed with this team is that, you know, when one group wasn't meeting their KPIs or were frustrated, they were kind of like blaming it on the other group. Like, well, development could have, you know, reached this goal sooner if marketing had done X, you know, and programming could have, you know, served more people if development had gotten them more money. I mean, it was really interesting to see mm -hmm. the intersection mm -hmm. of frustration. I mean, and I'll be candid, it was a little heartbreaking at the same time. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. As an outsider, I could, you know, I was like the mom of the group. <laughs> so it's like, can't we all get along? <laughs> right. But do you know what I'm saying in terms I of do. leadership? It's a, uh, it's a very interesting thing. And it's so common. So it is. It is. Yes. And so frustrating. Well, this has been great. I, you know, I say this every once in a while, but um, I don't say it enough. Probably I could talk to you for days because this is like my wheelhouse. And when I look at the expansive nonprofit sector, you know, 1.8 million registered nonprofits in the U.S. Um, this is a common theme. This is a common theme. And and um, those organizations that get it right achieve their mission, vision, and values. Absolutely. You know, I love what you said about that, you know, report where that is clearly stated on the top of every agenda, you know, items that are working within the team. What is it we're here to do? Really amazing. Beth Larson, Vice President of Client Experience, JMT Consulting. Um, you, my friend, are quite the wizard. I would love to be able to come in and have your talent and your framework for success because um, no matter how wonderful the technology is that JMT works with and, and the integrity that you work with, if you don't have organizations that have some of these other pieces together, it's not going to really be as great as it could be, right? 100%. Yep. It's yep. really powerful. Um, you know, you can learn more about Beth and the team over at JMT uh, Consulting at their website, jmtconsulting.com. They have a lot of information. They spend a lot of time on thought leadership um, with a variety of voices that come uh from across the country. It's really exciting. And as you know, Beth, and I'm sure you talk about this internally, um, the digital space and nature of our work, whether we think it's critical to our mission, it is. <laughs> I mean, it is. It, we have to be thinking this way. We must be addressing this. And uh, no matter what what our call to to, to service is, we must be doing this. And so I'm just thrilled that you are here today with us to chat about it. And I hope we can get you back on. Hey, another group that we want to make sure that we extend our gratitude towards are our, 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 our presenting sponsors. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that are invested in our nonprofit sector and in the nonprofit show. They make a difference in our communities and they help your nonprofits to grow strong so that we can do our missions. Um, Beth, this was a lot of fun. I really loved so many of the things that you said. And um, I think we need to be talking about this more and revisiting it. It's really powerful stuff. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Julia. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, everybody, we end every episode of The Nonprofit Show with this message. And the message is simple, but it's also kind of complicated. And the message is this, to stay well so you can do well.
We'll see you back here next time on The Nonprofit Show, everyone. Mm -hmm.